Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the day in which our Messiah was resurrected. Now, we recently did a video from a webpage called worldslastchance.com forward slash Yahuwah's calendar describing how the Roman Emperor Constantine and the Sanhedrin president Hilal II actually changed the biblical calendar. One of the things we learned from that website was that Constantine changed the day of the Sabbath day to Sunday because he was a pagan sun god worshiper and he wanted everybody to worship the sun as well so he declared Sunday a holy day. The website goes on to say how many people still today believe this to be true and they celebrate their Sabbath days on Sunday. Well, in this video, we want to go in and see when actually was the Messiah resurrected. It could be on Sunday, or it very well could be another day. So, let's go find out. And the way we'll do so is we'll come over to a website called paulcarlis.net and his moon calculator. I'm sure by now you are aware of websites and computer programs that can tell you the phase of the moon for any given day. Well, the unique thing about Paul Carlos's website is that we can go back in time earlier than any other program that I have found. So first we need to find out when was the Messiah crucified, in what year. And for that, we could come over to Luke in chapter 3. Down in about verse 21 and 22, we see that this chapter is talking about John the Baptist. And in this section, it's talking about when the Messiah was baptized. And in verse 23, we see that he was baptized when he was about 30 years of age. But more importantly, back up in verse 1. Luke tells us what year this was. See where he says in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar? Well, a simple web search lets us know that Tiberius Caesar's reign started in AD 14. So 14 AD would have been the first year of his reign. And so now we just need to add another 14 years to get to the 15th year of his reign. And that takes us to the year 28 A.D., not 29 A.D., because the year 14 would have been year one, not year zero. So let's come over to Paul's website and let's see when was the first day of the first month in the year 28 A.D. And let's stop back by Luke because remember Luke was telling us the year in which the Messiah was baptized that would have been the beginning of his three or three and a half year ministry in 28 AD so if we go ahead three and a half years that takes us to the spring of 32 AD so let's come over and let's see when the first day of the first month was in 32 AD now, according to Paul's calculator, we see the 0% moon fell on March the 29th. And the first sighting of the sliver of the moon would have actually been on March the 31st. So April the 1st would actually have been the first day of the first month in 32 AD. And that makes it easy because if April the 1st was day one, we don't have to pull out our fingers to see that April the 14th will be the 14th day of the first month. And when we look, the 14th day of the first month falls on a Monday. And that would have been the day that they would have crucified the Christ. On Monday, the 14th of April in the year 32 AD. And Tuesday would have been the 15th day of the sacred month and the Sabbath day. That would have been the day in which Mary and Mary had to rest before they visited the tomb, which they did on the 16th day of the first month, which fell on April the 16th. But that day was a Wednesday and not a Sunday. 
So this proves that Constantine's choosing of Sunday as the resurrection day was arbitrary, if not deceptive, to support his pagan holiday of Easter. In other words, there was no such thing as Resurrection Sunday. We should be saying Resurrection Wednesday instead. But those who follow Easter will never go for that. But we know that he was resurrected on Wednesday. And from now on, when people try to say that the date of first fruits or the date of Passover or that the Messiah was resurrected on Sunday, we know that they're just supporting Easter. And it really has nothing to do with when things actually happened because the Messiah was resurrected on Wednesday, not Sunday. But just to be comprehensive, we know that a lot of people incorrectly believe that the Messiah was baptized in the year 26 AD. I've done some research on this and it is just another fabrication that his ministry started in 26 AD. But when we look, we see that there's actually more websites supporting 26 AD than 28 AD. So let's go and let's do the same thing for 26 AD and see if that's where they're getting Sunday from. And for that, we go back to Paul's website. But this time, we're just going to subtract two years and say 30 A.D. And there we see that the first sighting of the moon would have been on March the 24th, making March the 25th, day one. And now we have to whip out our God-given calculator and start to add these days to find out when was the 14th day of the month. And what do you know? It falls on a Friday which would have been the day that they would have crucified him if 30 was the correct and Saturday would have been the day of rest and his resurrection would have been on Sunday. So that's why many support the year 26 for the beginning of the Messiah's ministry because by doing so it gives them their resurrection Sunday. And this is just another example of how man has changed the calendar, changed the dates, changed the times in order to fit his own agenda, in order to fit his pagan holiday of Easter Sunday. He's actually changed the date of the Messiah's baptism and resurrection so that it would appear to most that he was resurrected on Sunday. But that is contradictory to what we saw over in Luke. And I guess that's why many people do not use Luke chapter 3 in the reckoning of the Messiah's ministry because that scripture does not support Easter Sunday. <laughs> Ain't that something? These people are relentless in erasing the truth and supporting their pagan holidays. So now we know. Now, some of you may be asking, well, so what? What difference does it make? Is this just another one of Coach's old Bible fun facts that he likes to dig out? It's definitely not going to change those diehard Easter Bunny worshipers. In fact, many of them will be solidified in the 26th, being the year of the Messiah's baptism, despite what Luke ever said because with that date they can prove their Easter Sunday and no matter how many times you tell them that the Pope chose Sunday because of Sun God worship they're not going to believe it and those who love the Lord and keep his feast days don't care about Easter Sunday anyway so what difference does it make well, one thing of significance is the year in which the Messiah's baptism occurred. We recognize that as the first coming of the Messiah. And we know from scripture that that date was exactly 4,000 years after the creation of Adam. So when you're looking through scripture for the dates of the progenitors and the reigns of the kings, those two years makes a difference. And the biggest difference 
is when the Jubilee year was and when the next Jubilee year will be. That's a two year difference in the Jubilee cycle. Let me show you what I mean. To understand the date of the creation of Adam, what you have to do is subtract 4,000 years from the first coming of the Messiah. And you end up with the creation of Adam being 3972 BC. And with that date and the information given in the book of Genesis chapter 5 and 11, as well as the books of Jasher and Jubilees, you can see the timing of all of the births of the progenitors all the way up to Abraham and when he received the covenant. And from that information, you can see when the Jubilee year was, at least the last known Jubilee year in all of scripture. You read about that in the book of Jubilees, chapter 50 and verse 4. We know the exact year of the last Jubilee. So let's look at the math on this. We'll put in 1455.5 because the Jubilee year starts in the fall and not the spring. Then we'll have to subtract one year because the Jubilee cycles are 49 years and not 50. So we have to understand when the sabbatical year was then we can understand the futuristic Jubilee years and just like in the book of Daniel we learn that a time is 490 years well that's 10 Jubilee cycles 49 times 10 to equal 490 and we multiply times 7 to get to the current time now when you look over in the book of Jubilees you'll find that that 1455 Jubilee was the fifth Jubilee cycle and when we add that to the seven Jubilee cycles that it takes to get to present day we see where that lands as far as the 120th Jubilee so when does it end well we come back and we add another 49 years for the next Jubilee cycle and we have to add one year because there was no year zero we see that the sabbatical year falls in about 2023. Well, if you put in 26 as the date of the Messiah's baptism instead of 28, you end up in the year 2021 as the beginning of the sabbatical year. So it may seem like an insignificant change that Constantine did to force fit the resurrection of the Messiah to his pagan holiday Easter but to do so he had to change the year by two years and that changes the Jubilee year by two years so what will end up happening is some people like I did before I understood what Luke was saying in chapter 3 will proclaim the year 2021 as the beginning of the sabbatical year and when the correct sabbatical year comes they won't be prepared some will even plant in that year and not give the land its rest and we know the consequences of that all you have to do is look back in the year 605 BC with Nebuchadnezzar and he sacked Jerusalem we're told in the scripture that they spent 70 years in bondage so that the land could make up for the rest period that it missed over those 70 Jubilee cycles. So it's kind of important and their change will mess a lot of people up. But anyway, I'm glad I did this class. I wasn't sure where it was going to turn up. I was a little bit surprised to see Sunday at all. But now that I see where they're getting Sunday from, my understanding of the truth has now been increased and I hope yours has as well. And if it has, hit the like button and leave us a comment. Consider subscribing to our channel and Shalom.